Now, before I start, I need to introduce our speaker for today, Mr. Alex Siu. So basically, Mr. Alex is the fund director for BH Global Fintech Solutions and Dream uh, which is a SC licensed robo advisory firm. So he's a very reputable speaker in the industry, and he's also the CPE speaker for Security Industry Development Corporation, SIDC, since 2013. And formerly, he served as the first chairman of Ch Chartered Market Technician, CMT Association. So, uh, Alex, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, hear me. Yeah. I'm going to pass it over to you. Sure, sure. I'm excited to be able to share with you again an interesting topic. Uh, I've shared a few times uh, with these PUSA events. Uh, every time is a different topic. Uh, uh, parts, piece, pieces of the puzzles of the tool that I use, that I think of myself to trade the financial market. So along the years, I've been in the industry since um, 2003. So uh, along the years, I have developed my own way, my own tools. As you know, it's not easy to get a mentor in this industry, especially mentor that teach you the right thing. Okay, all right. So, um, so I've developed some interesting tools and along the way, I've also shared as I develop um, over CPE courses and also over some PUSA events. So if you are interested, well, always keep in, you know, in touch with uh, Excel Learning so that you, whenever they have new events, uh, if I'm the speaker, then you get to hear from me again. So uh, tonight's uh, topic is a bit deep. <laughs> so as usual, normally the complaint is that they don't know what I'm talking about, uh, right? So if, if you are a new trader, uh, just take it easy, all right? Treat it as an interesting idea. I think if you're a seasoned trader, probably you'll be able to appreciate uh, today's topic more. Because uh, there are many, many seminars out there that talk about the basic of trading, right? Uh, there are not many that go in depth uh, into what actually may work and what actually may work better as compared to uh, conventional tools out there in the normal platforms that you can find. So today this is about Hearst Exponent, okay? Quantification of a trend strength. So um, I, I was, this, this is some... Uh, I did some some info about my past. So currently, um, uh, I have uh, resigned as a fund manager after being a fund manager, licensed fund manager for about nine years. So now I, you know, like these tools, uh, previously I've shared about um, uh, residual plot. I share about um, the, um, spread trading technology. I, I share about uh, automating uh, the, the trading system, which I'll talk about it again because that was a popular topic that everyone wanted to know how to automate. It's part and puzzle of it. And then <clears throat> I share about machine learning and I share about certain um, quantitative tools I use like Arima, like uh, VAR model, factor auto regression model, Gutch model in the past, in the past topics. So these are all the tools that assist me last time as a trader and as a fund manager to, to, to trade in the financial market and create a uh, advantage or quantitative edge for myself so that I can actually win in the market. It's very important that you have your own weapon, that you have your own tools. So if you do not know why you are able to win, uh, most likely you are not winning. You are at a losing end. So you must know your weapons very well and use a secret weapon that others don't have to trade in this financial market and create a competitive advantage to yourself. So. First of all, I want to talk about uh, why uh, talk about this Hearst exponent and what is this role of Hearst exponent doing in your overall trading? Is, is it going to be useful for you? And why is it useful? So first of all, I'm going to talk about that. Okay. So before I talk about Hearst, you have to understand like the whole uh, framework, the whole framework is that um, it is part and puzzle of the overall strategy and it's not to be used alone, okay? Like for example, if you are a news reader and you look at the market news manually, you read newspaper manually, right? You take about 45 minutes a day to read newspaper and then you decided that, okay, the news is very bearish nowadays. They are all the doomsday news, like uh, Wall Street is going to fall further, fall further before you recover. The bet is not over yet. 
right, uh, S and P is going to drop way below three thousand eight hundred, which is the definition of a recession, which has already passed three thousand eight hundred, and then Wall Street has declared it a, a recession in U.S. And of course, we are impacted because the U.S. is a big financial market, right? So there are many many gloomy news. So the difference between pros and if you are just a part-time day trading, it's almost the same. It's just that you read the news manually. Some of the pros, they will use the robots or the AI to read the news for them. Okay, it's just that they are able to read the news um, much faster, like, you know, probably process about 10,000 news in about um, 0 0.2 seconds, right? About 15 news sites, about 0 0.2 seconds, instead of 45 minutes, read one newspaper. But the basic fundamental is the same, is that we have to keep in track with what's going on in the market, and we have to understand the news and the events that's going on, especially uh, global macro events like the Ukraine war, right? Like the certain uh, US politics and China politics and this and that. It will impact on our market. So before I talk about uh, first, I want to let you know that it's part and puzzle of the whole thing, right? So once you know the news and you are bearish on certain thing, right? And then you want to confirm, like for example, uh, last week, okay? I, 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 I'm still pretty much, I trade for myself. Yeah, I don't trade for people anymore. Uh, but I just want to short the market because the market seems so bad. But before I can short the market, I want certain confirmation that the trend is down, all right? So if you are a, a, a beginner trader, probably you will have read some books here and there, maybe about candlestick or maybe about trend line or chart patterns. They'll say, oh, the candlestick trend is down, okay? On the other hand, uh, for myself or some other professionals who use machine learning, we rely heavily on more scientific method instead of just the pure candlestick and visual. We let the machine tell us that it is down. How many percent chance is going to go down this week? Like for example, here you can see LSTM direction is uh, my machine learning model. Yeah, long short, long, long short term memory is one uh, one type of machine learning other than SVM support vector machine, random forest RF, and uh, uh, K and K nearest neighbor. These are all the machine learning types. So we use machine learning to tell us. What is the probability of going down? So you see from there that 46.29, the red color, the red color bar, it tells us that the chances of going down is about 46%. The chances of going sideways is the blue bar, is about 34.98%. And the chances of going up is only 18.73%. So machine learning quantifies what are the chances of going down sideways and up. So there's quite high chance it's going to go down. And if it's not down, at least it's sideways. There's very little chance. It's only 80% chance going to go up. So it gives us more confidence. What, what type of confidence does it give us? It gives us confidence to trade big, to trade bigger. Like for example, if I don't have all this, probably I'll trade one contract, you know, S&P or NASDAQ. But if I have this, then I have more confidence. I trade 10 contracts, you know rather than one. So that's why I'm able to win bigger. And if I'm wrong, I lose more. So confidence to make a person more money comes from tools that, that you are confident with. Not necessarily means these are the best tools, but your, be your best tool is always the tools that you develop yourself or the tools that you discover most suitable to yourself. Because trading is a it's a, like, like golf, you know, trading is a very individual thing. You're playing your own game, actually. Indirectly, you're competing with others, but you are very much playing your own game, making your own decisions. So, so what type of tools you use to play this game is very much on your own. So just like I use machine learning to decide on direction, okay, then um, there are some other people who use some other tools. But machine learning has certain, uh, like for example, LSTM. It can just tell me, that there is certain biasness, but sometimes I need to double check whether, uh, are you sure the trend is so strong? Okay, if the trend is strong, then what well, I will double down, you know, I will still bet one contract or bet two contracts or bet five contracts. So it all depends on how confirmed I am. So when the LSTM, which I talked about in the other lesson, you know, some other topics last time, Right. If you missed that topic, probably, you know, I, I might talk about it again next time. This is about machine learning. That's not today's topic. But when the machine learning model tells me a certain directional bias, I will check for Hearst exponent 
to confirm that this is the trendy market and not a random market. So when the Hearst exponent is um, of a certain value, is considered the market is not trendy enough, then I have less confidence. Probably I'll just maybe, you know, like short one contract. If the Hearst exponent double confirm that this is a, in fact a downtrend market and the trend is, downtrend is very strong, then I will short two contract or five contracts. So this is very practical application. When I share, I don't share too much theory. I share things that actually I will use in real life trading. And these are the tools I use in real life trading. All right, so you can see from here, if it's less than, 0 0.55 is considered not trendy enough. My indicator will tell me now the market is, is experiencing geometric random walk, means that it is not trendy enough. I don't have the confidence that it's going to trend very fast this week. Then I'll just short one contract because some other tools tells me the market is going down. The news is bad telling me the market is going down. So double confirmation is normally the role of Hearst exponent to assist other indicators or system or it's just an integral part of the system but not the system itself to to confirm the strength of the trend that's generally its purpose okay so is it really important to to know the trend you know to to, to be able to to trade in the market the answer is of course yes right you don't want to trade on the wrong trend like for example uh, i have friends who are video traders and of course they are they are rich people and they just love to go against the trend like for example when nasdaq is going up they believe that or the klci is going up they believe that oh the market can't go up forever then they keep shorting and shorting and shorting well there is a saying the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent i don't know whether you heard of that saving but i believe that saving is so true no matter how rich you are you can't have the cash to fight the market because no matter how rich you are, the, the big institutional funds, they definitely have more money than you, right? They have billions and billions of dollars to push the market up and to push the market down in a very ir irrational way in any way they want. So never fight against the market. And therefore, therefore, if you do not want to fight against the trend, then trend identification is important, all right? So trading in the direction of a strong trend reduces the risk of being on the wrong side of the market and increases profit potential like it's easy profit right if it's bull market everybody makes money like why want to fight the bull market and keep shorting the market unless you are michael Burry, you know like in the big shot you just know for sure that the market is going to crash because you are so knowledgeable you are such a knowledgeable fund manager or you know a trader that you just know the market is going to crash like for example now now you know, like, like the market was going on up, continue to go up everywhere. Everyone think, no, it shouldn't be going up. It should be going down. Everything is pointing south. But, you know, a few fund managers got burned in the, in the just recent months because the market got up and up and they were, you know, like they, they, they got margin call and they got forced out of the market before the market take a dive. So they entered the market too early. They shorted too early. So never fall. So the, the direction you could be right fundamentally but your timing could be slightly off and that will cost you a lot of money if your timing is off therefore trading in the direction of a strong trend is very important this is of basic because if you don't believe that oh i, I don't care about trend you know i don't need to trade again with the trend then there is no need for you to understand what hers is because that's what hers is about that's what adx is about it's about understanding how strong is the trend so that you stay on the right side okay like for example you have two armies you can choose which army you want to start with. One army is a very big army. The other is just a small army. Well, there is a small chance that a small army can overwhelm a big army, but most of the time, a very big army can overwhelm a small army. So you want to choose the side of a big army where there's a lot of directional debt imbalance. You know, you understand what is debt imbalance? There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of uh, buy offer you know offer to buy there's very little offer to sell so the bid offer will keep bidding at a market price and take market price take market price so the price will keep going on because the buyers keep taking sellers ask offer and keep taking market price so that is called debt imbalance debt imbalance is one party overwhelms the other will ensure a trend that's what a trend is a trend is about debt imbalance of bid and ask offer that's what a trend is about so when you have 
a, a strong trend, then you stay in the right direction. You, you can't go too wrong. You know, the, the, in a bull market, the trends just go up and up. Even the tea lady become millionaire in China by just, you know, like just simply bet, oh, buy. And the price and the trend was just uptrend bull market for a few years. They become multi-million without knowing much because they just write the trend. That's better than going against the trend. So that is the purpose of ADX, you know, that, that ADX has been around for a long time. It's in most of the platforms, like in the bank platforms, they are in a lot of those uh, retail platforms like MT4, like TripStation, like Interactive Brokers. Whatever platforms out there, ADX is around because a lot of people rely on it to check the trend strength. Okay, so, so before people know about, or before you know about hers, let's talk about ADX first. Because that is a, one of the very few, it's surprisingly few indicators that you can actually get from the conventional platform, right? Like MT4, like Interactive Brokers, like uh, Sexual Trader, whatever, like your Maybank platform, CIMB platform, UOB platform. Surprisingly few that is a conventional indicator and platform that talk about the strength of trend. Many, many, many indicators talk about oscillators, you know, like for example, RSI. MACD, Stochastics, our, our Bollinger Band. There are so many that talk about oscillators. There are so few that talk about the strength of trend. And ADX is one of the few that, that talk about it. So we have to talk about this first before we talk about um, hers. Okay. So what is ADX? ADX, why, why do people use it to determine the strength of trend? Okay. It is calculation based on moving average of the price range expansion over a given period of time. Okay, the default is 14 bars means 14 days if you're doing a day chart. Okay, some people use 21, some people use 20. It doesn't matter whatever suits you. Okay, the, the default is 14. It is used in stocks, mutual funds, ETF, futures to decide uh, whether the trend is strong or not. So if the trend is strong, okay, you can see that ADX is bought as a single line from zero to high 100, normally around 30. You can see when ADX cross above 30, it means the trend is strong, okay? It is strong, but it's non-directional. It just tell you the strength of trend. It doesn't tell you it's uptrend or downtrend, no. It's just, it's non-directional. It just tell you whether the trend is strong or not strong, okay? So it's normally plotted in the same window as a two-directional mo movement indicator, DMI, okay? DMI plus and DMI minus. Normally when the crossover is telling you the change of trend, the EDM, DMI plus, a uh, crossover DMI minus, it tells you it's uptrend. And when DMI minus cross over DMI plus cross down, it means it's downtrend, right? It's pretty similar to some other oscillators, but it's accompanied by ADX where if it's cross 30, it is a very strong trend, an exhibition of a very strong trend. And when the trend strength dies down, it will go below 30. Okay, so you can see these certain things I get from Investopedia. Uh, there's a lot of explanation there because ADX is a mature indicator it has been used for a long long time by a lot of people and a lot of people understand that well if you want to check the strength of a trend use adx okay you can see from here right that that is uh the chart above right so it's an uptrend reversing to a downtrend so when it's uptrend adx goes up above 30 and then when it's no longer trendy it's like a reversal time transition time is a bit sideways adx go back down means it's not trending and then when a downtrend comes adx uh basically shows above 30 again and it's very very clear here that you can see adx is kind of like lagging a bit right when it crosses above 30 it's already like halfway there and this one if when it grows above 30 the downtrend is almost finished Right, when it's downtrend, start of a downtrend, you can see ADX is still way below, way below uh, 30, okay? But you can see that the DMI minus cross over DMI plus at much higher earlier that to tell you to signify that there is a transition of trend direction from uptrend to downtrend. So DMI assists ADX to give you a reading whether the trend is uptrend, downtrend, because ADX doesn't tell, but DMI tells and where and how strong the trend is and the transition uh most of the time the dmi crossover is faster giving you an early warning that the trend has changed from uptrend to downtrend okay so this is a very popular indicator uh, as a general guideline to quantify the trend strength you know uh we always like to quantify everything we we have um very fixed readings like 0 0.25 to 25 is about 
a weak trend. 25 to 50 is a strong trend. 50 to 75 is a very strong trend. 75 to 100 is, it is a very strong bull market or it's a very strong bear market or it's a recession or it's a market crash. If it's, a, it's a above 75 and the market is crashing down, it's an extremely strong market. All right. So these are general guidelines. As a user, you will need to really understand how ADX apply to your product because the readings are different. What defines a strong trend? You can see it varies so much, right? Depends on the product that you're trading. So if you're trading uh, stocks, Malaysian stocks versus US stocks versus Forex versus futures, this reading will be different. So you have to know your product's ADX very well. And these are just general guidelines for you to know that, you know, that you uh, whether you should use or deploy a trend trading strategy or not. So in a very in a very easy, uh, simple concept, if the strength of the trend is weak, use a range bound strategy, right? Like Bollinger Band strategy, uh, AD, A ATR, you know, I talked about those in the previous sessions, uh, use oscillators, but if the strength is trend is strong, like above 50, right? Or above 30, above 50, or above 50 to 75, when the trend is strong, don't use an oscillator like RSI, you will die. Definitely. It will just keep showing uh, overbought, 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 overbought above 70 in RSI or oversold, oversold, oversold below 30 in RSI. And you will just keep staying there. You will, you will not mean revert. It means because the trend is strong. So whatever range bound strategy you use will all be killed. Then you have to change to a trend following strategy. Like for example, moving average crossover. For example, um, Ichimoku is a trend following strategy. And there are many, many other trend following strategy. In the quantitative sense, uh, I will be using VAR, vector auto regression as my trend following strategy. I'll be using uh, binary logistic regression as my breakout and trend following strategy. So these are the trend following strategy I've been using in the past for my own trading. Okay, right. And of course, I'll be using LSTM to, uh, as a trend following strategy. So trend following strategies or non-trend following strategies really depends on, do you know whether there's a trend and how strong is a trend? So, so, you know, so sometimes um, it's not about, should I use a trend following strategy or should I use a range bound strategy at all time? The answer is, it depends on whether it's trending or it's range bound. And there are very few indicators to do that. And one of the few one is ADX. Okay, so uh, I'm just not going to like um, talk so into ADX, but at least you should know ADX before you talk about hers. Because if you don't know about ADX, then, then you do not know how good hers is or how bad hers is. You have no ADX and its limitations that you can see from here is slightly lag. It's slightly lag behind that the trend is already halfway up before ADX confirms the trend. Okay, and uh, the, 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 the strength of the trend is strong before it confirms. Okay, so it is slightly lag, but it's better than being on the wrong side or, or, or over early uh, trading or over early reaction to a pattern. It is better to have confirmation. So ADX does ask you to like hold your break, don't enter the market so fast, wait for confirmation before you enter and you make sure you enter at the right side of the market, right? and not on the wrong side. So that's the purpose of ADX, okay? So, so you have to know that, that that is what ADX is used for, all right? Okay, all right. So ADX uh, has many, many ways to use it, okay? Many ways, getting strong, getting less strong, and an up, uptrend can still rise on the falling ADX, you know? All this, so if you're interested in ADX, please Google. Please, there are many, many YouTube videos on ADX. I'm not going to talk about ADX the whole night because today's purpose is talk about hers. All right. So do uh, research upon it, okay? And what, that how to master this indicator as to measure trend strength, okay? Then when you really understand ADX and DM, DMI plus, DMI minus crossover, all right, uh, how, how it can measure and shows momentum divergence, and stuff like that, all right? Like for example, MACD can show divergence. ADS can show momentum divergence or trend divergence, okay? So when you master this trend momentum indicator called ADS, then we are ready to understand that, okay, it has certain limitations and I wish there are tools that are more responsive, can give faster and early signal while equally accurate or more accurate than ADS. Then we are in the position 
okay, to study about Hurst exponent, okay? All right, so that is part one about ABX, okay? So I hope you already appreciate that. It is important to stay on the right side of the market, which is the trend. Is the uptrend, long, don't short. If it's downtrend, very strong downtrend, short, don't long, okay? Or don't do anything if it's a Malaysian local market because you cannot short, so you just do nothing while it's downtrend and wait for reversal, right? Then the second part is the random walk theory, okay? Right. What is considered a random walk and what is considered not a random walk? This is essential to understand first, okay? So from this chart, can you tell me that whether is it uptrend or downtrend? Is it trend or ranging? Okay. Can you predict what will happen one hour later? All right. Okay. This is a 15 minute chart. My, my answer is I can't. Okay. And then this is a 60 minute chart. Can you tell me that what is going to happen later? All right. It, it, it looks downtrend. It looks downtrend. But are you sure how downtrend is downtrend? Okay. Right. And this is a daily chart. So can you predict what will happen the next day or the week? Okay. So this is what I call simple technical analysis by chart pattern. It's, it's not that it's totally useless. Some people have mastered this art. I call it art because it's subject to interpretation. Okay. This is the convention way of thinking about technical analysis is that it is subject to interpretation. So when it's subject to interpretation, everybody looking at it will have a different conclusion. Then it is very hard to have a consensus that, oh, we are looking at the same thing and we came to the right same conclusion. You can't because uh, chart patterns has different, different uh, uh, assumptions. Okay. So what we want is a tool not based on speculative or on subjectivity, but on objectivity. We want something that is that everyone look at it you will actually come to the same conclusion, okay? So that is called a more scientific way towards trading, okay? So first of all, we have to have this assumption, okay? In order to, to look at charts, right? Because why? When you look at chart to trade, you have unknowingly made a few assumptions. The first assumption is past chart data is useful to predict the future. If not, there's no point looking at chart, right? That's the first assumption you make. Second, assumption is that by looking back as the x number of bars, you can predict the next x plus one ahead. That's the assumption. And the third assumption you make is chart patterns repeats and history repeats itself. So they are reliable to predict the future trend. If these are not true, then whatever you look at the chart, it is useless because it cannot predict the future. So by using charts to trade, you have made these three assumptions. So are these three assumptions scientifically proven? Are they logical assumptions? So that's what I'll do is that uh, I will actually look at the, the chart, the, the chart, and I'll ask myself, is the data random? So instead of looking at the chart, I look at the data, okay, real-time data. If the data is random, then there's no point trading, okay? If the data is not random, whether is it trending or ranging, okay, that is what I will actually ask myself. So you can see over the last 15 years, this is my framework. This is my framework, okay? This will actually... Uh, is the solution to many of your questions, okay? I, I can share with you this because, uh, you know, I, I have, you know, retired as a fund manager. These, are, these were my secrets, how I'm able to, like, have a very systematic framework of decide what to do, what to do, what to do next, if this, what to do, if that, what to do, okay? But now I can share with you now, right? So is the data um, stationary? Is yes. Then is the data mean reverting if it's mean reverting use a certain model okay if the data is not mean reverting like but it's trending then use a certain model like regression analysis okay under regression analysis there are certain questions to be asked whether should i use multiple least square or logic okay if the if the data is mean reverting then should i be using uh var or vec vecm depends on whether the data is co-integrated Okay, and, and does one lead the other? Is there intermarket connection? If no, then I'll be using Arima. If yes, I'll be using Catch. So this were my flow of thoughts, okay, over these years that I utilize on these tools to trade. And these are my secret weapons. Okay, so that is why I call the time series modeling flow chart. Okay, so this, this chart this chart is worth a lot of money if you know how to use it. This will be for seasoned trader. If you are a newbie, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so let, let's, let's carry on. 
Okay, so it is said that the price pattern in the financial market it follows a geometric random walk. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a book in Kinopunia called Random Walk Down Wall Street. What it says is that it's not easy to predict the market. The market is random most of the time. Sometimes the market is non-random where it trends, but most of the time the market is random. And even if the market is random, it doesn't mean that you cannot predict the extent of its randomness. It means that you can measure within this space how far the market can go in the up or down direction. It means that what is the boundary, even though you cannot predict whether it's up or down. So even the market is random, it will follow certain rules, it will follow certain constraints. Okay, so that is what the nature of the price is. Okay, it cannot be predicted where up or down, but it can be predicted how far it can go, even though it's random walk. Okay, so that is the foundation of random models. So what we can do is that you can do a Gaussian random walk with what a 100, 1000, 10,000 simulations and, and all the potential random walks then you actually can see these are all, all the potential movement and there are the limit you can see here. The most is that you will go up here, positive 20. The most is that you go down here to positive, negative 20 and that is the limit of how far the market can go over time. In a short period of time, like one day, this is as much as it can go. If it goes beyond that, you will rebound. If it goes beyond that, you will come back down. So that forms the foundation of range trade, intraday range trading. So over one week and over one month, the margin of error gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's very hard to trade anymore. So that's why quantitative models works better in a shorter time frame, like intraday trading. Uh, global macro strategy works better in the long run. Okay, because in the long run, you use quant models, it's not that beneficial. Uh, quant the global macro models will win. But in the short term, like especially intraday or intraweek, quant models will be more accuracy, have higher accuracy than uh, global macro models. Okay, so this is the formula stated in the book, you know, geometric uh, ra uh, random walk down Wall Street, geometric random walk model. Okay, what, what it says is that the previous past history has an impact on the current price. And with some error term, uh, it will follow a certain rule or certain law that it will be random within a certain expected range. Even though the path is random, but the range is predictable. And this is forecasting model is known as the geometric random walk model. Okay, and that is the foundation of modern days volatility modeling in quant modeling. It means that, like for example, you ask me, uh, public bank price, how far is it going to go down today? If the market is extremely volatile, all my calculations, the background behind the foundation or the theory are based on this geometric random walk. Most of it, most of people's model are based on this as their base. So if you have, if you want to use quant models, you have to understand the bell curve. You know what we learned in the in the secondary school uh, that forms the what the central ten, the central tendency, you know, central tendency curve which it tells you that yes, it's random, but it can only go within a certain constraint, like one standard deviation, two standard deviation, or three standard deviation. Like for example, John Berger say, no matter how volatile the market is, it can only go to three standard deviation with the chances of 99% of the time, which is not true. In the modern days, like 208 crisis, it can go to seven standard deviation. It's proven that John Bollinger's time is a lot more calm than the current time. The current time is a lot more turmoil and a lot more volatile. We are in a more volatile, and it's also been proven that, you know, during the turtles time, the ATR, uh, Richard Danny's time, uh, two ATR will work, but currently you can see that using the turtle strategy, you will experience a lot more volatility as compared to their time, 1984. So the market has changed. The market has become a lot more volatile, partially because of the HFT, high frequency trading, partially because of the bots, partially because of the dark pool, existence. So the market has become a lot more volatile. So you have to adapt the old theories like, uh, like Bollinger Band into a newer market time frame that with this volatile market, does this formula still works? If not, how can we modify the formula? Okay, so that is logic check number one. Let's uh, recap again. Logic check number one is whether the market is random. Okay. The logic check number two is do you need a mass test to verify whether 
how random is random. So we have two tests here. One is called Hearst Exponent Test. One is called Variance Ratio Test. First is to prove whether the market is random or not random. Second is to prove how many percent is random and not random. So you can see, you can go to very, very, very detailed. If it's not random, how many percent is not random? Is random, how many percent is random? So first and various ratio work hand in hand, but I'll just be talking about first and how to use rather than, you know, talk behind the formula and become a mathematician, which everyone don't care. All you care about is how can this make me money? That's what's important, right? As trader. So how can it help to make me money? So I'll just be talking about application and not so much of the theory behind, even though if you want to modify the formula, you have to know the theory, but you are not going to modify the formula, right? You are just going to use it. Okay, so you don't have to know so much of the theory and the formula. Just know that it is meant to be comparative with ADX to study the trend, strength, and the randomness of the market. That is the purpose of it. Okay, all right. So let's part three. Let's talk about Hearst. So let's talk about how it's being used. Let's talk about the, the value of Hearst. So the value is this, if it's less than 0 0.45, the Hertz value, okay, it is range bound market, okay? If it's more than 0 0.55, it is a trendy market. And between 0 0.45 to 0 0.55, the market is random. It's a random world market, then the data lacks forecasting value, do not trade at that market because the market is unpredictable. Why? Okay, simple. If the Hertz exponent value is less than 0 0.45, pick up the range strategy, right? Bollinger Band strategy, MACD strategy, RSI strategy, stochastic strategy, take them out, you will work. If the market is trendy, take out the Ichimoku strategy, take out, take out the moving average crossover, take out the uh, regression strategy, take out the VAR strategy. It's a trendy market, take out the turtle strategy. That strategy will work. So which strategy works depends on whether the market is ranging trendy or neither trendy nor strange trending means that it is random when the market is random do not trade so if you factor this into your system design if you are developing a, a trading system then that's that, that's what makes sense you know that's what makes sense so the hearse using matlab to to calculate okay if it comes out the the price the value is 0 0.5 to some 50. If it's 0 0.5029, it's less than 0 0.55. It means that the market is random. So don't trade. Stop, don't trade. Okay, we are talking about the, the, the price chart that we saw just now. This one. We are talking about this. This one. This one. Yeah. We are talking about this, this data, but it doesn't matter. It applies to any data. Okay. So this test tells you that the market is random. And then here tells you how random is random. So the variance ratio test, the p-value, if it's 0 0.9895, it tells you that the market is now, the price is now 89% random. It's very random. So, so there's, there's, it's unpredictable. So let's not trade, okay? And a, a good example will be, um, let's say NASDAQ index or S&P index during Asia times. Uh, sometimes it's pretty random. It's not very trendy, okay? Uh, during Europe times, like after 2 p.m., Malaysian time, you will start to trend a bit. And then during U.S. time, it's definitely very volatile and sometimes very trendy. But during Asia time, it's not so active. So most of the time, you will see a higher variance ratio value during Asia times for S&P and NASDAQ index. Okay, so that is actually how we measure how random. And if it's very random, then don't trade. So uh, are these ratio random work tests, are they absolutely reliable? Okay, this is just a, a, a disclaimer. They are not absolutely, it's meant for reference, but definitely it gives us some comfort if, okay, it is, you know, if, if, it, if it's uh, of a certain extreme value, it gives us a comfort. Like for example here, I cannot decide um, which pair should I be trading. Let's say if you trade uh, currencies, if you are like in a treasury department in bank and you're a currency trader, which pair should I trade? Let's say I um, have, I'm an expert in Bollinger Band. I only, I'm very good at trading a uh, range bound market. So which pair should I trade? So you can, if you can see from here that, you know, like from the Hearst, uh, the most range bound pair is NZ, which is NZ USD in New Zealand versus dollar. It has the, the smallest value. So what does that mean? My, my Bollinger Band strategy is going to work best at that time 
for New Zealand versus USD. So I should be trading that pair scientifically. It's not that, oh, I feel lucky trading GU. Uh, I feel like trading UJ. It's, you, you get the feel and the luck all out of the equation. You just see whichever pairs has the best uh, first exponent for range trading and whichever pair has a first exponent for trend trading and whatever is in between, they are not the best choices of to, to of product to trade for today, for the day or for the week. So this is how we decide what to trade. You know, sometimes you ask me, should I just be mastering one product, FCPO and forever trade on product? Yes, you can be a, 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 a expert in one product, but scientifically, FCPO doesn't trend all the time, just like any other products. It doesn't range all the time. So sometimes it range, it, it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't range and doesn't trend. It's unpredictable. So, so if, if you're a full-time trader, then every day you are looking for something to make money with because you can't afford to be ideal. Say, oh, FCPO has no trend. I, I'm going to stop trading for one month, two months. You can't afford that if you are a full-time trader. If you're a part-time trader, yes. Just trade when you're comfortable. Don't trade when you're not comfortable because you are not relying on that for a living. But for a full-time trader or fund manager, you are. So you have to choose the product that is most predictable that they are going to be range bound or they are going to be trending. And hers plays a big role to help us to decide which product to trade, okay? So for example, New Zealand USD, right? 500 data set samples show signs of non-random walk, okay? So we use that to check variance ratio to double confirm that the data is non-random. So it does prove that 0 0.06 means that only 6% is random. There is a sign that 95%, 94% of data display is non-random. It's, it's predictable. It's predictable to be range bound, okay? Then the next question is, the next question is, do we want to, want to see if the data is auto-regressive? Means that the historical has an impact on future. If NZ zero means the, 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 the current price, is it influenced by NZ negative one? Means one bar go price. Then you have to look at the, Auto regression with one leg formula, which is y equal to y minus one times d plus d, which is error term. Uh, it's too scientific. You, you, you don't have to understand this, okay? And the ADF test, uh, augmented degree fuller test is test if b is zero or more than less than zero. So these are all very scientific, but basically, generally, is to see whether can we trick this product right now or not. That's just to check, use the stationary test, okay? Whether the, the past data has impact on the current data or it has no impact on the current data. Can we make use of past data? If we can, then of course, our chances of success is much higher, okay? It's non-random, okay? So time series modeling, okay, we'll check for that. So if the data is non-stationary, you cannot trade it. You have to make sure the data is stationary, okay? Then you can trade it, all right? So these are, these are all very, very technical, okay? How to make sure it's stationary, how to make sure that the, the, the equation is not spurious, Okay, you do you need to do a few tests, but if you don't understand all this, it does not matter. It does not matter because why? Um, you you are not a quant. Okay, what you need to know is how to use hers. Okay, but be behind it, there are a few steps you need to get it right. Okay, there are many YouTube videos to teach all this. If you are really interested in, and you are very serious in trading, like oh, I must know whether the trend is strong or not, okay? And Alex say there is something better than ADX, so I'm going to research into it, then yes, you need to know all this. But if it's just three, like, oh, it's something interesting, then you don't have to go into all this stationary test, ADF, or augmented degree follow. But these are the things I use. These are the things I use to confirm, because why? When you trick a bigger bet on it, like, like you're not betting like $1,000, $2,000 or ringgit, you're betting like $100,000 in one trick or $1 million in one trade, then you have to be very, very sure you are right. And with that, you need to do all these tests to double confirm, triple confirm that I am right. And I can make this trade. And these are all the supporting documents or, or data. And I'm going to show this to management that I make this trade because of all these supporting, right? When you make big trades, all these matters, okay? All these matters, all right? So you can see how auto-regressive is the uh, one, 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 one difference you know, one level difference of, because D and Z means one level difference of the time series. Okay, so from here, you can see that up to two legs are still autoregressive with significant impact, means that one data before and two data before can still impact on the New Zealand price. Okay, but more than that is no longer effective. And you can see from here that this is quite a good model. It's not a bad model. 
it's quite a good model. Uh, if you know how to look up the AIC, uh, AKK information criterion and source criterion is negative 11, it's not a model, right? So the, the least squared method sees the different light on impact, okay? But um, you can see from here that up to first and second light is still, uh, still significant. And after that, third and fourth light is no longer significant in, to, to, to predict the current price, okay? Right, means that uh, if you're using a 15 minute data, what it means is that 15 minutes ago, that data is useful to predict now. Half an hour ago, data is still useful to predict now, but 45 minutes ago, data is no longer useful to predict now. If you're using a daily chart, it means that yesterday's price is still useful, the day before's price is useful, but three days ago, price is no longer useful to predict the current market trend. That's what it means, okay, in a very layman term. Okay, so these are all the tests to confirm that. All right, so if it's auto regressive, then you use ARIMA model, okay? Autoregressive, integrated, moving average. I talked about that in the previous class before. It's all integrated, all the classes. So you can use that modeling to achieve price linear forecasting. And from there, you forecast what is the range bound, okay? With 95% probability, all right? What is the range bound, okay? Uh, at end of the slide, I'll show you how to use it for today's market. Today, on the, on the 5th of July, how to use ARIMA combined with HERS. To, to trade today's market. I'll show you at the end of the slide, okay? Right, so that is the use of ARIMA. And from there, you can see that next five hours, the upper limit is 0 0.821, the lower limit is 0 0.811. That means that with 95% chance that for the, for the rest of the day, okay, trading day for New Zealand versus US dollar, because it's non-trending, I'm going to do range. And what is the price to do range? Instead of using a Bollinger Band, I'm going to use ARIMA, which is more accurate than Bollinger Band. The reason why I already explained in the previous lesson, last time I talked about that, comparing Bollinger Band to ARIMA. And the lower limit is 0 0.811. That means that at that price, then the 5% chance is going to revert back out because the market is non-trending. So I can use range bar and I'm confident to long New Zealand dollar versus dollar at 0 0.811 because there is 95% chance I'm going to win. So it's very, very technical. Is very quantitative, and you can see from here that the range of data are used to predict this range. So from here is the timing. If it comes here, I will short, and you can see that I short here and come back down, I win. And then whatever happens later is the next day. It's none of my business already. Even though the next day is still doesn't pass the the upper limit and it still come back down, and you can still win if you hold until the next day. But the rule is is an intraday trading. It's very accurate intraday if you are using you no know, quant models. Intraday trading is to your advantage. If you are trading three months, six months in, a, in, in ahead, uh, quant model is not your advantage. Global macro strategy is your advantage. You have to know exactly what type of uh, strategy is suitable for the duration of holding, how long you're going to hold the trade. Yeah. So forecast maximum room within the X time frame. It reinforces the Bollinger Band resistance and support. Yeah, so this is the upper limits hole within the time frame. You can see it was pretty accurate doing it on uh, whatever that I was trading on. Right, the prediction was you know like it reaches here and it just came back down. It reaches here, it go up a bit, it came back down. It is precise. It is precise. Okay, it is precise. So so you have to understand. And and wh why do I know whether should I be range bound? Should I be using Arima and should I not be using trend following strategy? It's hers. Hers tells me I should be using a range bound strategy because it shows an extremely range bound value to me. 0 0.41 for New Zealand versus dollar is an extremely uh, range bound value and it's, it's non random. It's predictably range bound, okay? And it's predictably non trending and it's predictably non random. So that's why I can trade on this pair. It's very, very precise. We, our decisions are very precise. We, we don't simply and of course we don't just use the price of of this one product to trade that product we look at intermarket and when we look at intermarket then granger causality because important like what is impacting on new zealand okay uj U, us dollar jpy and uh, gbp usd are having an indirect impact on new zealand and then aussie dollar has a direct impact on new zealand it is leading new zealand dollar so we also use correlation coefficient matrix to see what is correlated. That's called intermarket analysis to double confirm that uh, should I be long New Zealand, should I short New Zealand? We have to look at other pairs as well who are leading. So if they are leading, okay, 
and all four pairs are not co-integrated, then you cannot use VCM, you can use factor auto regression, you can use MAR, VAR. Okay, with the VAR model, then you can have something, okay, VAR, VAR modeling, this is VAR modeling, okay, and this is a VAR model, you can plot this equation into your MT4 or into your system, you will show an indicator to show you when is the time to buy and sell New Zealand dollar based on intermarket analysis. Okay, so you can see from here that C1, C2 are uh, lacks of NQ. This is auto regressive. Past data is useful. C3, C4 are Aussie pair. It's also significant. And C5, C9 are not that significant, but they are indirectly impacting. So again, this is considered quite a good model with uh, F76 less than equal to zero and David Watson more than 1.5. About two means that it's not a non spurious model. Okay, so. Uh, uh, I can get too technical, so it's, it's okay if you don't know what I'm talking about, but this is uh, big money on the bet. So, like for example, if this trade I would put on, I'll probably put on, let's say, uh, I'll bet a million on this trade. So I have to be right, I cannot be wrong. So I have to make sure everything is correct, and I have a lot of data to prove that my bet is a good bet. I could still be wrong, okay, but I, I, I greatly re increases my chances of success. That, that's what I would do. Okay, that's what I would do. So that's what all of this is about. That's all this is about. So three related equations, okay, vector auto regression models, and then they are all useful, okay, to predict this thing, which is proven to be non-trending, New Zealand Aussie, New Zealand dollar. Okay. So we have done some research into it. Okay. And then we want to see how volatile is this pair so that we can get it right so we use arima just now to look at is is a random walk so that we know when is the extreme end so that we know when to long okay and then double confirm by what is leading new zealand dollar which is the other pairs and then we triple confirm with the uh, another volatility modeling using using the arch model okay the arch and the gauge model to to double confirm i use gauge one one actually okay as a uh, gauge stand for a general general auto regressive conditional heteroscedasticity model okay it's meant for predicting where is the volatility precise entry timing so that when you enter straight away it rebounds up that the precision of it you don't wait you straight away rebound when you enter you need that precision because uh you can't afford to wait when you wait when you are losing money when you're having floating loss the stress comes in so when you enter you want to straight like for example the, 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 the most ideal is a public bank or whatever, you know, or, or top glove go down and down and down and down and immediately you enter, it just reverse back up. That's everybody's dream, right? But how to do that? These are the precise way to do it. To, to make sure you can detect the absolute bottom just before reversal, you need to use GACH, you need to use ARIMA, you need to use VECM, factor auto regression. These are the models to detect absolute bottom. And the, the assistant tool of it is HERS. The Hurst is a winning formula behind all this. It's a small little factor, but it's an important factor. So how to detect buy low, sell high? <laughs> Sounds easy. Nobody will, nobody will teach you the precise model. These are the models to do buy low, sell high. But people won't teach you that, right? This is very, these are, these are industrial secrets, right? Industrial secrets. So for the next 15 minutes, okay, I talk until uh, 9.45. Okay, I won't go too much into gauge and you know the predictability of gauge and all these things but i just want to let you know that you need to have a, a, a set of steps very scientific and precise steps to win in this financial market okay and, and it doesn't have to be what i'm saying here it doesn't have to be gauge it doesn't have to be first but you must have your own precise step if you don't know you can't win you have to know and everyone every fund managers every professional trader have their own tools and they are very stubborn about their tools. They would think their tools are the best. Of course, it's proven by results. If you keep losing and you still think your tools are the best, then that's wrong. But if you keep winning and you believe your tools are, are the best, then that's fine. You see, that's fine. So you can see that I, I rely on a few things to make a decision. And in the end, I still look at the economic data release. I still look at what is coming up, the data that can change the market. I will still analyze those things. Okay, right. So I'm not going to go into EDR strategy, okay, right? I'm not going to go into uh, risk management. This is what I talked about last, last topic, like how to manage risk, how to do position sizing, 
you know, with proper risk management and with proper strategy, that is the winning rate. Okay, it doesn't mean that you win all the time. It means that out of 100 trades, probably you win about 66 trades. As compared to out of 100 trades, without all this strategy, you win about 50. So it's 50-50. You increase your odds of 50-50 with the strategy implemented to about 66% winning rate. It doesn't mean you have 100% winning rate. Trading is hard. After... How many years? Coming 20 years of trading, I can tell you trading is hard, right? It's just like golf. Golf is hard. It's a hard game, right? So if you want to win, you have to put it all your heart into it, right? You have to trade with your heart. And you want to win, you have to really put effort into developing some weapons that are unique and people doesn't know about. That is your winning weapon. That is your secret weapon. You have, you need that in order to win in trading. So I thought about this in the past uh, position sizing. So I, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about how to automate solution for first. Uh, people just love this. People love to talk about oh, how do you automate. Okay, so I'm just going to spend some time talking about automation, right? Right. So if you if you have a if you if you have a let's say an RHB account or you have a let's say CMB account, if you have a let's say GF Apex account, you you have a Affin account. These are some of the brokers, bank brokers that enable you to automate. You can automate with them, provided that you get a green light from their API vendor. Okay, you have certain her strategy. You can see that if my strategy is systematic, it can be automated. If it's subjective or subject to human interpretation, it cannot be automated. But you can see mine are all very scientific. It can be automated. So in order to automate it, you need to get a UAT certification, user acceptance testing from the bankers or your broker's API vendor. So once you get the vendor to approve, then you can automate through sending your order to the API vendor. The vendor will fire to the broker. The broker will clear your trade through the exchange. So that is the automation process. And it takes about a few months to get your, your, your automation approved and your system connected to the vendor's back end or to the, your broker's back end. Okay? So all your data fit here, fit into your machine learning. And your machine learning will send an execution. The execution will set fire an order to your vendor to execute trades. So the most important, the brain is your data processor where all these HERS, ARIMA are all done there automatically by the system. That's how you want to automate. You need to automate everything, right? Then what's remaining is the vendor's uh, interface to automate. Like for example, if you want to automate RHB, you can definitely use the uh, uh, Win RHB, uh, the QSD Quick Screen Trading is the RHB's vendor to automate. All right. So these are all the steps by steps how you can actually automate your trading. Okay, automate your trading through it. And this one I talked two times already. This is the third time I talk about how to automate. But because of curiosity, people always love hearing how to automate my trading. Okay, go to your vendor IT department and ask them. Oh, I want to automate. Teach me how they will liaise with you. Of course, you need to pay extra fee to automate. Yeah, it's not cheap, right? In order to automate trading. So this is automating FCPO, automating FKI trading, automating NASDAQ trading through my RHB uh, yeah, vendor. Okay, the quick screen trading vendor, QSD vendor. And these are the step-by-step -step of how to configure an automation. Uh, the whole process took us about three months before we were successful. So it's a lot of pain. But if you get a very experienced vendor to do it for you, you need to pay them uh, probably about from 3000 to 20000 pounds on the vendor. Then probably it saves you a lot of time. But we figure everything out ourselves. And it took us about three months to figure everything out. Okay, to automate. Okay, short-term trading strategies for FKI. First exponent with machine learning. So machine learning, LSTM, okay. Everything feed machine readable news, okay. Really fast. Uh, able to read news piece by piece, like process all the news in less than a second, thousands and thousands of views in a second, and uh, able to you know absorb and understand all the news. And then from there, you have a bias. And this sentimental analysis bias is used hand in hand to confirm whether, you know, with hers and with the Arima and, and, and the Gatch and all those models, is it the right timing depends on the current sentiment and that all that can be quantified into MRN indicators to quantify the sentiment. Like when NASDAQ has become from negative to positive, right? 
until Nasdaq actually go up, there is a lag of about five hours. And within these five hours, we, 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 we double confirm the Hearst, we double confirm the variance ratio, we double confirm the Arima, the, 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 the gauge. We double confirm everything that, okay, I want to long Nasdaq. Is this the right timing to long? We have sentimental, we have quantitative, we don't use technical, and we use uh, fundamental in terms of uh, this, uh, we quantify fundamental. So I take technical out, I just have quantitative, sentimental, and fundamental quantified. Okay, all this to confirm a trade, one trade. So I think, oh, why does my trade not make money? I thought I study the news and I look at chart. You can see how much effort I put in to make one trade. This is all talking about one trade. There's so much effort just to make one trade because why I want this trade to win. And if I want this trade to win, there are a lot, a lot of effort to put in. Just like for example, if you play golf, you can simply hit or you study the golf course, you study where is the, all the obstacles, you plan carefully for one month before you approach this golf course, then your chances of success is a lot higher. It's the same thing. There is a lot of effort in trading before you make one trade. There is so much effort. So don't think that trading is easy. It is not. It's a very difficult sport. Trading is a very difficult, if you trade it as an e-game or as a sport, you know, <laughs> it is a very difficult video game if you trade as a video game, right? So all these are basically FCPO, how the machine learning train the FCPO to recognize parent and then use LSTM to tell you whether the FCPO is going up or down, you know, and then uh, predict a price for FCPO. That's machine learning. And then you, whether is it the right timing, you will repair a first, whether is it trendy or not, okay, right. But LSTM, the machine learning forms a very crucial part of predicting, okay, predicting the, the direction of the, of the trend and predicting the price, you know, like every periodic auto forecast system, all these are machine learning, okay, all these are machine learning. So, so for us, we already automate everything, you know, once you automate everything, you can, you can go for golf, you can go for traveling, let the system run everything, that's true, yes, but you still need to, every, a uh, few months, you still need to uh, monitor and review the system. Whether is it still making your money? Of course, you will know. If you start losing money, you know something is wrong. If not, just keep letting it run and make new money. All right. So, so that so you have to look at your evaluate your system. Okay. So when LSTM skew towards the directional, first is needed to confirm the strength. So let's just summarize it again. That's what hers is used for: is to confirm the strength. Okay. So let me talk about uh, application of Hurst for decision making process. Okay, so this is actually uh, this is actually today, today, yeah, today, right? So is it the right timing to to long or short Nasdaq? Well, the market news is bad. Okay, so should I long Nasdaq? I have a chance. Why? Hurst is showing non downtrending. Now the trending has lessened. And as at today, if I want to long based on volatility, based on Arima or Gash, I have a chance because why? First shows today is not a strongly downtrend market. So it does help me to make a decision for today's trading. So we are talking about 5th of July, how I can apply first with a uh, volatility modeling together. Okay, together as compared to ADX, you know, I have ADX here as well. It doesn't tell me much. So first tells me a more precise a uh, conclusion than ADX. ADX is just too late for me, right? When you when you trade that, okay. So that is application of first in decision making for today for Nasdaq one hundred index, and that is the I make a trade based on that. And so that's something I actually use, not something that theoretical. And let's talk about it and forget about it. No, but it's something that I actually use day to day, every day, and I share with you that I'm still using. It's not something that oh, it it it, I, it used to be good, but now it's a. Uh, you know, no longer useful. That's why I'm sharing all this. No, I'm still using this every day. It's still something good. So I'm sharing with you today. Like for example, today, um, should I be, let's say if I'm trading the currency, right? Should I be short JPY? Okay, right. Uh, because why? Euro JPY is going up. USD JPY is going up. Pound JPY is going up. Okay, should I short JPY? First tells me JPY is trending down. The trend is strong. With a red color, you can see there. My first uh, indicator tell me it's trending. It's more than zero point five nine, so it's trending. It's non. It's non random. It's trending. So because JPY is trending down, everything else is going up. So if I if I have a more assurance when I want to long this, it it, it does 
it does help me to decide, okay? It does help me to decide whether uh, should I be shorting JPY or not with a strong first value. Like for example, how, how, how do you utilize this? If I'm going to Japan to, to travel, like now it's open back up already, well, should I be changing all my yen now? Or should I keep some of my ringgit or US dollar to change to yen later? So if yen is continue trending down, I should keep some, right? I shouldn't change all my yen today because it will continue to go down. Because why? Hers tell me yen has a strong trending down. So that even assists me in a tourism purpose. When should I go to money changer to change to yen, right? And then if I have children, you know, education in Japan, you know, should I set, convert more yen to send them money or should I convert less and convert later? I have a bigger power to get more yen, you know, because yen is trending down. So hers exponent, does have an implication to day-to-day -day life as well. It's not just on trading. All right. So these are this is today, today. And I look at Arima. When is a good time to actually uh, change yen? That will be when it hit uh, intra week. Yeah, Arima support of uh, eighty percent. That is when yen could rebound. That will be the best timing to exchange yen in the money changes. So you see, I whatever I I share here is applicable to day-to-day -day life. It's not just to to, you know just not just to uh, trading itself okay so that is actually um the thing that i want to share with you i'm not sure how much you can get you know out of uh, what i'm sharing today because it is a difficult topic because probably you have never heard of it uh, what is uh, Hurst exponent but you have to know that in trading you have to stay at the right side of the trend <laughs> but that's easier said than done you know don't stay at the wrong side of the trend then you ask the person who tell you that how do I make sure I don't stay at the wrong side of the trend? Then the person would most likely say, I just look at the trend line law. <laughs> if it's that easy, yeah. If it's that easy. That is very that is a very unscientific answer. I'll give you a more scientific answer. You look at the first exponent. That's how you make sure you stay at the right side of the trend. Okay. So that is what I want to leave with you. Okay. I want to leave with you uh, for today. I hope that it will it will it will enter your mind or you enter your heart that that trend identification is very important, okay? All right, so, well, that is actually pretty much what I want to share with you today, and then I can open it up for Q&A. Right now, I'll, I'll pass the time back to Tinting.